Hi, this is Sean from Housefly, and tonight I'm going to tie a fly for you called the Slim Stone. So to start things off, in the vise I have a 50-45 jig force uh, jig hook from Fulling Mill in size 10. And it's paired with a 3.2 millimeter black nickel tungsten bead from Fulling Mill as well. So I've got some thread already attached to the hook shank. Um, this is a Danville 6.0 in black. The version of this fly that I'm going to tie right now is uh, the just a black stone fly. It's going to be a black base with uh, black ribbing, black tail, black legs, and dubbing. Um, you can tie this in a bunch of different versions though. Like here's uh, this one's really good for a little golden stone or uh, like a yellow sally imitation. You can tie it in more brown tones. Um, there's a lot of options just by changing out you know your thread color and your dubbing color and uh, the leg material, it's, it's pretty easy to, to make a lot of different versions of this fly. So this black stone fly version in particular, I'm tying in a size 10 right now, but I like to tie it down to as small as about an 18. I don't really like to tie this one too much larger than a size 10. Um, and it's a, a good pattern for your little black winter stones in smaller sizes. Um, but trout kind of seem to pretty readily eat this fly um, at, at most times of the year. It's a great high and off color water fly too. So got my, my thread uh, advanced to about the halfway mark on the hook shank and then to start help encouraging a small taper build I'm going to bring my thread right back up to behind the bead and this is where I'm going to tie in the first material which is uh, this is a daddy long legs um, leg material from hairline and this comes in a number of different sizes and colors and it's a, a really durable material that works really well for the ribbing tails and legs on this fly it's also a a nice kind of thin diameter which is just perfect so i'm going to start by folding this over my thread i'm just going to fold both ends of this tail material over the leg or over the thread i'm going to tie it in on the top of the hook shank and start making some loose wraps towards the rear. Now it's important to make looser wraps as you go rearward on the fly with this material because if you go too tight, you're gonna cause the material to splay out and jump and point in all kinds of strange directions. Just to help orient things in the proper position, we're gonna go light with the thread at first towards the rear and then make some slightly tighter wraps as I move my thread back up towards the bead. I'm just going to make sure that the legs are, or the tail material is kind of positioned the way I want. Everything's looking pretty good. If you need to move things around a little bit, you can kind of pull on the tail and try to slide it into position you want. But this is looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to trim it. And I like to trim my tails so that they're about the length of the body. Next, I'm going to take that same piece of material that I use, the daddy long leg material, and I'm going to tie this in on the side of the hook shank, and this is also going to be the ribbing of the fly. So this is going to add some, just some kind of depth to the body. Um, rather than just having a, a boring flat body on this fly, I'm going to make evenly spaced wraps with this daddy long leg material to help kind of build some little uh, bumps and give the, the fly body some depth. And uh, before I wrap this up the body, I'm going to build a little bit of a, a taper with my thread just by going back and forth until I'm satisfied with the look. I don't want this to be a super thick body, hence the reason why I'm using a 6.0 thread and I'm just going to build a slight taper because this fly is intended to be um, slim so that it sinks quickly. So before I wrap this ribbing up the body, in order to reinforce it, I'm gonna use, this is a, a Zappagap brush on super glue. And I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of this on the top and bottom of the hook shank. So that ribbing material has something to grab onto and it just makes the fly a lot more durable in the end. I'm gonna use the base of this brush to apply the super glue. If I use the tips, I'm gonna get a big glob of the super glue on the body and it'll just be too much glue. Um, I, you won't like the end result if you use the tip and, and get a huge glob of this glue on there. So by using the base of the brush 
you're able to control the amount of glue that you get on the body of the fly, it's a lot more easier, a lot more easy to manage and work with. So we got a little bit on the top and the bottom. And now I'm just gonna make some nice open wraps with this daddy long leg material up the body. And then capture it just behind the bead. Just a couple turns in front and back will do. And then trim that out close. And now I'm gonna to start to build my thorax. So the thorax region on this fly is made using a black UV ice dub from Hairline. And it's really important to, to start with just small pinches of material to build this dubbing noodle with. A lot of new fly tires have a tendency to use massive clumps of dubbing and it, it, uh, it's probably one of the most difficult things to, to figure out in fly tying as a beginner. I get questions about it all the time in the shop and most often the problem with new people when they're, when they're trying to use dubbing for the first time is they're just using too much. So I'm going to start by building this thorax just with a, a small noodle. It's about two inches in length. And I'm gonna make a full wrap behind the bead and then just start to go rearward until about the one third of the body length mark. So in other words, uh, one third of the hook shank back is how far I'm gonna go with this. And then I'll bring it back to the front and wind up with my thread just in the middle of that thorax. So I'm gonna split it evenly. And now I'm gonna take this daddy long leg material once again and I'm gonna fold it over my thread and I'm going to place that folded over leg material right on the side to make a couple of legs. I'll put two wraps around it and just make a rough trim there. And then again on the opposite side, same, same deal. I'm going to fold that leg material over my thread and tie it in right on the side of the thorax. And now to cover up that little portion of thread, I'm just going to take another little touch of dubbing and make a small noodle just to clean things up. And I'll make a couple of wraps to cover that up and then use the last little remaining bit of dubbing to bring my thread right up back towards behind the bead. And so now I'll trim my legs out and uh, everybody kind of has their own preferred lengths for legs. Um, I like mine to be about this long, uh, and you're pretty much finished. So now I'm just going to use another little touch of that brush on Zappa Gap super glue, my thread, and I'm going to do about a four turn whip finish right behind the bead and then trim that thread out close and the fly is finished. And, uh, this is a nice fast sinking stone fly pattern. Um, again, it's really good in sizes about 10 through 16 and um, all the materials will be listed in the description along with links to purchase at our website, which is houseflyfishing.com and uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. Thanks a lot for watching.